I've gone on record saying that when a doctor tells you that your thyroid symptoms are all in your head, you should run, not walk away from that doctor. But that's not entirely true. It is definitely the case that sometimes other medical conditions can run around masquerading exactly like hypothyroidism. And some of these conditions can mimic the exact symptoms of hypothyroidism so closely that the only way to tell the difference between the two is with a complete set of thyroid lab tests and a careful eye. If you personally have been struggling to get your thyroid symptoms under control, then this information is incredibly important for you. Let's talk about the conditions that act and look exactly like hypothyroidism starting right now. Number one, hyperparathyroidism. Don't let the name confuse you here. Even though the word thyroid is in the name, the parathyroid gland is completely different from the thyroid gland. But even though the function between these two glands is completely different, the overlap in the symptoms between hyperparathyroidism and hypothyroidism are incredibly similar. Just take a look for yourself. Excess parathyroid hormone results in symptoms like depression, fatigue, feeling thirsty, a loss of appetite, muscle weakness, constipation, and brain fog. Hyperparathyroidism causes high calcium levels in the body, which then circulate around inside of your bloodstream and cause all the symptoms I just listed. You can diagnose this condition by looking at your calcium levels, your parathyroid levels, and your vitamin D levels. What makes things complicated though is the fact that hyperparathyroidism can coexist in patients who have hypothyroidism. There's even some evidence to suggest that a chronically elevated TSH level may trigger hyperparathyroidism. So be on the lookout for this condition if you are a thyroid patient who is having trouble managing his or her symptoms. Number two is anemia or low ferritin without anemia. Anemia is just a state of low circulating red blood cells. When your red blood cells are low, your body will have trouble carrying oxygen to the cells that need it, and it will cause symptoms related to this decreased oxygen carrying capacity. These symptoms may include fatigue, weakness, shortness of breath, pale skin, chest pain, and even cold hands or cold feet. Anemia typically isn't missed by doctors because they're often on the lookout for it. But what is missed by doctors is low ferritin. And both doctors and patients included fail to realize that you can be in a state of low iron without anemia. And this low iron state can sometimes cause symptoms that are quite severe. There are plenty of thyroid patients out there, perhaps even you listening to this right now, who have low iron in their body without anemia, but in who would benefit from taking iron supplements. The good news is you can easily identify this situation by checking your ferritin and iron study levels. And whether you have a thyroid condition or not, it's a good idea to keep track of your iron status on a semi-regular basis. Number three is sleep apnea. It's estimated that about 20% of people suffer from sleep apnea and about 85% of those people don't even know that they have it. The reason for this is that the symptoms associated with sleep apnea tend to be very broad and very general. These symptoms include things like fatigue, weight gain, daytime sleepiness, mood changes, dry mouth, brain fog, decreased sex drive, and even headaches. Two of the most notable symptoms on this list include fatigue and weight gain, which also happen to be two of the most common symptoms associated with hypothyroidism. So before you go out and blame your weight gain and your fatigue on your thyroid, make sure you look at the quality of your sleep. But do be aware if you are somebody who has a thyroid problem, that this means you are much more likely and more prone to develop sleep apnea. So it may very well be the case that you have a combination of hypothyroidism and sleep apnea, and both of these conditions need to be treated separately. Number four is menopause and perimenopause. Menopause is another huge confounding variable for patients who have thyroid disease. Every single woman will go through menopause at some point in her life, and the transition to menopause is rife with symptoms that range from mild to severe. Some of these symptoms include things like hot flashes, decreased libido, insomnia, chills, mood changes, weight gain, and even hair loss. If you're paying attention, you will notice that the symptoms associated with menopause have overlap between hypothyroidism and even hyperthyroidism. On top of this, the changes that occur in the sex hormones associated with menopause 
also have the ability to negatively impact thyroid hormone levels all by themselves. So it's very often the case that you might be experiencing symptoms related to menopause directly, as well as symptoms related to the impact that menopause has on thyroid function. It's usually pretty easy to identify when you go into menopause and to differentiate this condition from hypothyroidism. But it can be difficult to differentiate between perimenopause and thyroid problems because at this point, the symptoms of menopause are not quite as pronounced. Number five is fatty liver. This one is a little bit of a stretch because oftentimes the first symptom of fatty liver is no symptom at all. Fatty liver typically doesn't tend to cause problems until it's mild to severe, but that's not always the case. When it does cause symptoms, patients who have fatty liver may experience things like fatigue or low energy, swelling in the legs and ankles, dry skin, and a loss of appetite. You can easily diagnose fatty liver with some basic lab tests and an ultrasound of your liver if necessary. What's more concerning about fatty liver to me is the fact that your liver has a direct impact on thyroid function. Your liver is the primary site of thyroid hormone activation, and when it's damaged, that activation is impaired. So it is absolutely the case that if you have a liver problem, you are most likely causing problems with your thyroid as well. Number six is adrenal fatigue. There's a lot of debate over whether or not this condition is actually real, but for the purposes of this video, it doesn't matter at all. Here's why. No one can deny that chronic stress has a negative impact on the entire body. So whether or not you want to call it adrenal fatigue or some other name is completely irrelevant. All I'm pointing out here is that the condition associated with chronic stress results in symptoms that predictably mimic those of hypothyroidism. These symptoms include things like fatigue, weight gain, cravings for sugary and salty foods, depression, hair loss, and even insomnia. Beyond the similarity in symptoms between both conditions, problems in one gland have a negative effect on the other gland. In other words, chronic stress can negatively impact thyroid function and cause problems with the TSH. And low thyroid function can make your body less resilient to stress and raise cortisol levels. In many cases, it can feel like a chicken and the egg-like scenario when you try to figure out which came first, your adrenals or your thyroid. In my experience, it makes sense to look for problems in both glands if you know you have a problem with one. And it never hurts to practice lifestyle changes to reduce your exposure to stress or increase your resilience to stress. Number seven is fibromyalgia. And this is another common condition that is often confused with hypothyroidism. And there are a lot of similarities between these two conditions, including the fact that both conditions can result after a stressful or traumatic event. Both conditions have an overlap in their symptoms. Both conditions get worse with low thyroid hormone levels. And both conditions can often be very difficult to both diagnose and treat. There's even some evidence to suggest that low T3 levels can cause a fibromyalgia-like syndrome all by itself. We also know that T3 medication can be used to ease the pain in patients who have fibromyalgia. It's estimated that hypothyroidism is found in about 40% of patients who have hypothyroidism. So it's very likely the case that some people who have been diagnosed with fibromyalgia really just have hypothyroidism with fibromyalgia-like symptoms. But that still leaves a whole lot of other people who have true fibromyalgia, which is not related to their thyroid. Either way, you should be aware of the overlap between these conditions if you have one or the other. Number eight, we have vitamin and mineral deficiencies. Vitamins and minerals are important for every single system in your body, and if you have a deficiency in these vitamins or minerals, you may start to experience symptoms which range from broad to very specific. And some nutrient deficiencies cause symptoms that overlap with the symptoms of hypothyroidism. One example is vitamin D deficiency. Symptoms of this condition include things like fatigue, insomnia, bone pain, depression, hair loss, muscle weakness, and a weakened immune system. But this is just one example. There are plenty of others, including deficiencies in zinc, selenium, iodine, and even vitamin B12, which cause a very similar situation. These deficiencies are often missed by doctors, so it's really never a bad idea to consider taking something like a broad-based multivitamin just to make sure that you can replace these low levels. If this is your first time hearing about these conditions, then it might seem overwhelming, but it doesn't have to be. By far, the easiest way to determine the source of your symptoms if you have hypothyroidism is by looking at a complete set of thyroid lab tests. 
And if you want to see which tests you need to do just that, make sure to check out this video next.